art for art's sake, regardless of the individual politics of its audience. Three generations of the art of America's Wyeth family being packed up for a visit with the people of the Soviet Union. And American audiences delighting in an exhibit of Russian art. Two societies learning about each other, forming a developing picture of openness. This exchange of ideas between the United States and the Soviet Union, meant to bring the citizens of the two traditional rivals closer together, starts right at the top. Last year, Americans were excited right on the street by the leader of a nation which they have in the past severely mistrusted. The guy is a PR genius. I mean, jumping out of the car like that. That's unbelievable. And last month, Secretary of State George Shultz and his wife, visiting Soviet Georgia, were received no less warmly, also by a people that were for so long suspicious of U.S. intentions. This newfound display of friendship was discussed by President Reagan and Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev at last December's Washington summit. Both agreed that much progress has been made in the people-to-people -people exchange between the two vastly different cultures, vowing to continue the process in the future. This getting-to-know-you relationship has its roots back in 1956, when both nations agreed to exchange monthly magazines describing their own cultures. In this new era, the pages come to life. American rock star Billy Joel on tour in the Soviet Union. The Moiseyev folk troupe in the States. These moments are not only entertaining, they add a new dimension to negotiations between the long-standing competitors. These exchanges bring a kind of humanizing element to the dialogue. I mean, it's very hard um, when you bring Horowitz to Moscow and you watch the emotions and then you meet with Soviet officials for them not at least to be affected by uh, the warmth of the event. The hope is, along with the exchanges, like the regular visit of the Bolshoi Ballet to the United States, will come a softening of the hard line on the tough issues that separate the two nations. And there's more to this creative diplomacy than just the dance. Better educating young people today to understand each other's world is key in shaping better superpower relations tomorrow. Youth exchanges, like this one where Soviet kids enjoy America's outdoors, are a blossoming area of the President's U.S.-Soviet exchange initiative. The hope of the exchange program over a long period is that uh, particularly younger Soviets, uh, students, scholars, will have a much more realistic view of the United States. The Chautauqua Talks, held in upstate New York and the Soviet Union, affords the adults, both private citizens and public officials, the chance to discuss the vital issues of the day. The next meeting is scheduled to be held in Tbilisi in September. On a grander scale, Information USA, a multimedia exhibit, has toured the Soviet Union to the attendance of more than two million Soviet viewers. <laughs> But science and technology exchanges are not limited to exhibitions. Outer space is not as cold and lonely since the United States and the Soviet Union began cooperating on its exploration. A study of Mars is scheduled for the summer. Closer to home, both nations have agreed to a joint research program to monitor the threatened atmospheric ozone layer that shields the Earth from radiation. On land, an agreement to conduct research into the safety of civilian nuclear power plants is a new joint venture. Again concerned with nuclear risk reduction, the superpowers unveiled a new hotline system to better communicate possible nuclear dangers. And the trade future looks promising as well. The U.S. continues to supply one-fourth of the Soviet's grain. But the past was not without problems. The growth of exchange programs in the 70s collapsed with the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan in 1979. And the arrest of American journalist Nicholas Daniloff in 1986 jeopardized relations until his release. This year, the embassy security issue is still lingering. Aside from charges of bugging and surveillance stemming from each other's embassies, more complications have arisen. A United States Marine was accused of collaborating in a Soviet spy mission at the U.S. Embassy in Moscow. One resolved area concerns the prior Soviet jamming of the United States Information Agency's Voice of America radio broadcasts. Gorbachev's glasnost eliminated that. Future exchanges, including a visit by the Dance Theater of Harlem to the Soviet Union, will continue to bring a spirit of human cooperation to the East-West dialogue. Breaking down the communication barriers between the U.S. and the Soviet Union may not only lessen the historical distrust between its populations, it could result in the way their leaders address foreign policy. Steve Kaufman, WorldNet News, Washington.